We're given this rule, right? We're given the rule that Give a substitution that should take place in order for us to apply this rule, right? So, generally speaking, any given x isn't necessarily going to give us this cons of x and tail t, right? Because, for example, <coughs> if x is nil, then it's not going to return this, it's going to return something else. So, we have to have a substitution that takes place on x in order for us to use this rule. So, um, sort of, yeah, it, well, um, there are a lot of these terms that are used interchangeably, like substitution, and, um, I'm hesitant to say it's exactly like the first problem, but it's the same idea in the sense that, like, you're sub, I mean, you are substituting, of course. Um, so, in order for us to be able to apply this rule, what does x have to be? Yeah, x has to specifically be a cons, right, of h and t. So then we can say, um, and we have to use this parse syntax. So that part, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure on the syntax we're using here. But basically, in general, the substitution you have to make is that x has to be of this form, right? It has to be a cons of an h and t. So we can say, in order to use this, our substitution. It's a single type of x and and remember, a singleton is a type of substitution. Right? A singleton is a substitution where we just have a key and a value. So these two together form a rule. Right? And this can't exist on its own as a rule because x is just a general variable, right? X, it, x is a variable, and if we're assuming x is a list, it can have two different types, but not every single list is going to give us this output, just as not every single list is going to give us this output, right? It depends on the specific value that we're giving. Well, the single thing has kind of like Yep. So equivalently, for this first problem, I said tails nil equals cons of nil nil, right? Like that's a that's a yep. So that's an equation, and then we don't need to make any substitutions in order to apply this. I could just as easily say tails x equals cons of nil nil, while making the substitution that x. Does everybody see how those are kind of two equivalent ways of saying the same thing? I can either specify in the rule itself that like when I pass a nil as an input, um, I get this output, and then I don't need to have any variables that I need to substitute. Or I could give this variable name x and say, OK, when x is a nil, that's what this parse is doing. It's just sort of like, um, Yep, and the reason we can't, um, um, well, I, I guess we could invert this one too and avoid the, um, 
No, actually, I don't think we can do that because in this cons, we have two variables h and t, right, that are kind of, that belong to this cons. And um, like cons is a, a, a nil is always a nil, for example. Like just as an empty list is always an empty list, but not all non-empty lists are the same, right? So that's why for this one, I could just have tails nil equals cons of nil nil and just leave it as that. But I believe because cons depends on these two inputs h and t, we can't directly put that into here without changing the same situation. Does that make sense to people? So we just have to specify what the variable is? Yep, so if you use, in this rule formalism here, if we have a variable x, x doesn't, unless it's the case that for any input x to this function tails, it's always gonna give you this, if that's not true, because that's not true in this case, right? It's, um, interrupt me if I'm talking too many negatives here, but it's not true that for any input x, we're always gonna get cons of x at tails t out of this function tails, right? We're only gonna get this output if x has this specific form. If we're able to match x to this specific form. And, yep, that, that x has cons of, an H and T where H is an int and T is a list. So like if X happened to be like a list of like constant like strings, for example. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. I see. Yep. So it's the only the, sorry, the, but the objective is just uh, so if you because I think on the fact that start that line where like you it's giving me like yep. calling tails on X and then like the match but the, so the idea is Answer here is to write this variable list that represents in like a bit of like what happens, I guess. Yeah. Can substitute it. Yep. So yeah, the idea is to give a substitution in this case in the form of a singleton, right? Yeah. And I mean, how we had it earlier where this was tails of you know, and then this was the empty list, like how we had it initially. That's also a substitution, right? It's just the empty substitution. Yeah. So, so a rule is basically an equality and a substitution joined together. That's what a rule is. How we define. Does that make sense to everybody? So in this case, this is our equality and our substitution is empty. In this case, this is our equality and our substitution is a single thing. Is that okay with everybody? Um, yeah, it's a specific syntax here. I'm not <coughs> super familiar with it. He has, some, he has something about it in there. Yeah. Yeah, basically, um, if you're actually writing this code, this parse would essentially turn this string into an expression. Um, I... Yeah, yeah, that's kind of all it does. It just turns the string into an expression. Um, and then, So then we have, um, give the rule variables left hand side and right hand side for the cons case, right? So that's kind of pretty similar to what we did here. Um, 3B is distinct from this one in that we give, uh, he gives you like a specific equation and then you have to come up with a variable list to match that equation. But um, in 3C, you're kind of doing the same thing that you did in 3A. So, that's when you come up with basically an equation and a variable list for um, the second case, right? So if we if we if we're going to the assumption that we can do the same thing as in problem as in three A, 
Can someone give me what an equation would be that we could substitute in here? So you have it almost exactly right. So uh, pretty much the exact same as we did here. We say tails on this certain input form gives us an output, right? So um, and keep in mind we don't have we never define x. But we know if we're matching x with cons of ht, then we can just say Yep, because here we're, like we don't define this variable x in here, but we know that since we're matching x with this form, x of this cons ht are interchangeable. So then in this output, we get cons of cons ht, <coughs> and then uh, this just saves tails. 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 And then well, now we have, oh. instead of a substitution, we just want the list of variables used. So what variables do we use here that aren't um, defined types? Ht. Yep, just h and t. So that's all we're looking for in 3C. Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, do you just use cons or cons of H and T as an input just because, or is that like specifically what you're looking for as an input, or it could have been something else? Um, in this case, it's specifically what we're looking for. Okay. Because we ask you to give a rule specific to this con. Okay. So you said x equal to con H and T. Uh-huh. Yep, the same as here we said x equal to nil, right? Yeah. In this first part. And then we just basically say what's the output from there? Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then because in this nil case we didn't have any variables that we used, because nil is a nil and cons and tails are predefined, right? Yeah. We know tails is this function, we know nil and cons are specific subtypes of this list type. But here we have H and T that we don't I mean, yes, they're an int in our list, but they're not like a specific int or a specific list. So those are like variables, I guess, to our um, to our rule here. Um, does anybody have any questions about problem three? Um, if you do it, I'll feel free to raise your hand. I'm happy to answer. But if not, I'll move on to problem four. All right. Um, so um, in problem four, what we give you is the output of this um, perform steps function. And we don't, so 
in problem four, we have a perform steps function, right? And we're assuming this perform steps function is a function that kind of starts proving something until it can no longer synthesize anything, right? And we pass into perform steps equalities, which is some set of equalities that we don't define. So in this problem, we never tell you what equalities actually, like what equalities actually contains in it, but you can assume it's some set of equalities that we have. And we're trying to prove a certain equality, right, at, that's given at the top of the problem. What we're trying to show is that um, I'm just going to call it PE. So this is, like for example, you can think of past homeworks, like this is something we would give you to prove, right? And that's what we're trying to have, that's what we're trying to have the program do for us. So, um, in the problem, we give you two, the result of two calls of this perform steps function, right? So we know we have, so equalities is some set of equalities that we know nothing about the details of. So we can just write it down and we don't have to really think about it further because it's just an input to perform steps. So we have perform steps of equalities and then this left hand side here. And that equals like that equals I'll call it basically that that just gives us a series of steps, right? So we can think of we can think of perform steps as our proof in a sense. Um, sorry, does anybody have any questions so far? I want to make sure I'm not too far into, too far into this. Okay, so we know that if we call perform steps using our set of equalities and this left-hand side, it gives us these series of three steps, right? It gives us like um, a tuple of equation one and this expression. It gives us a tuple of IH and this expression. And it gives us a tuple of equation two and this expression, right? So that's basically telling you exactly what your proof is going to look like. So all we need to do here is, we, we, what this problem is asking you to do is write a proof in the same style as we did on past homeworks. But here we're also giving you all the steps of the proof. So all you need to do is just write it, right? So all we need to do for this one is we start with the left-hand side, which is, well, okay. Let me actually just write it on this one. Um, so we start with, this. So if we're actually doing this proof, we start with writing the left hand side, right? That's generally a good place to start. We can say that equals. And then what's our first justification? Yep, equality one. And we don't know what equality one is, but we don't really need to care about what it is, right? What's that going to be equal to? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So this problem, it's kind of deceptively simple, right? All you need to do is just write out. We, it's like we give you 
approve, and we give you all the steps of approve, we just kind of write it in a little bit of a strange way. And all we're asking you to do on this problem is reorder it into the same style as the previous proofs we wrote, right? So, <coughs> so like you get equal equation one, equation two, and you want to go to equation two back to equation three. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm not gonna write out the actual steps, but it's the same idea for the first proof for the first for the first perform steps call, right? We call the we our justification is the IH. We have um, that cons of x bar y y, and then we have. And we have right, and so that's kind of all we can get from the first perform steps call. We just wrote down step by step what that function tree was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. That's so the next step would just be like the reductive hypothesis justification. Yep. And then just simply writing cons x bar y y. Yeah. So like um, x result. Yep. Actually, I think that's a typo there. I think what I had might have been. Oh, what you had meant. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry. I, I was just looking at the other ones. I think you just made a typo there. But gotcha. So then you go from equation two to equation three. Yep. So. Similarly how, what you're saying is exactly right. So normally how, when we do these proofs, we're trying to get from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. One tactic that we can always use is to simplify those both down to like a happy middle, right? So that's, that's exactly what this is doing. It, we can see that we can, if we take the left-hand side, we're eventually gonna get this cons x, y. We know that from the first part, or from the first perform steps call. And we can see from the second perform steps call that if we input the right hand side, we're also going to get to this cons x, y. But I'm sure some of you got this as feedback on some of your proofs. We don't want you to write it as two separate things, right? We want you to just write it as one full flowing proof starting from the left hand side and getting to the right hand side. And then meets in the middle. Yep. So now all you need to do is take that the list in the second. Um, in the second perform steps call and just start writing it backwards. So we know that, for example, we have, so we start with bar, cons x, y, cons x, y, and then we have equation three, parse, or we have cons x comma bar y, cons x comma y, right? Can we all see that from the, the first element of the output list of the second perform steps call? And we can see that that equals cons x y, right? In a sense, like that cons x y is the second. Uh, is it is it's on the right hand side of the equation. Yep. So if you go down here, I'm saying we have this oh, right as here. the first uh, element of the output list, and then we have cons x y as the second element of the output list. So yeah. basically, we know that. Um, think of that. Think of each thing in that list as being like one line. And then the next element of that list is saying like element one equals element two, element two equals element three, et cetera. And we know in this case equality is reversible. So we know if x equals y, y equals x, for example. So we can take that second perform steps call and we can just go backwards. So we can say cons x, y. Um, I'm going to write it here. Let's go the back of the header room. We can say, um, So we can see. Um, so you could just work like bottom up, like right or hand side of the con. You can just work your way up yeah. until you get that, that convex. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so we're going to use equation two again. And then that's going to give us the first element of our list. So.
and that's over here, right? So one thing to keep in mind is um, if you're starting with the left-hand side, you can pretty much just exactly copy the output, right? You have equation one, then some expression. You have IH, then some expression. You have equation two, then some expression. However, if you are if you then go to the right-hand side and start doing things backwards, um, the justification is gonna be like, I don't know if this is an explanation that makes sense, but the justification is gonna be offset from the, um, from the expression. So, for example, we have now we have the now we have the last the last part of uh, the second call is just cons x y, and then we have the justification, and then we have an expression, and then we have another justification, and then we have our final expression. So we just kind of do everything backwards. And yep. Hold on for ten hours. Well, I was I was just gonna ask. Uh, in his answer, he removes like EQ two. Do we lose points if we add EQ2 on our thing? Um, sorry. Um, where does he remove? Oh, uh, it looks like dirty. He says remove duplicate steps. Like down here. Oh, um. I didn't see it because I didn't write out the IH step all the way. But we can see that if we did write this out all the way, we'd end up with right. So after we apply the IH, we get this expression, right? But because we can see that this is exactly equal to something that comes up later. Then that allows us to remove everything in between. So in that case, you should remove duplicates because if you if you see something, basically if you get something equal to itself, then you kind of do no work in the middle, right? So that's all unnecessary. So because we see that after we get the IH from the left hand side, we get this cons of x bar cons y y expression, or bar. Yeah, whatever it is, I, I, I miswrote it somewhere. I mean, this this simplification, I guess, is something connected to the other. So that that would work, is what I'm asking. Like that, that would work. Having EQ two, EQ two. Um, yeah, it would work. But I would say if you notice something like where this is equal to this, then just erase. Just if you see something that really jumps out to you, I would say just go for it. So on here, you have equation three. Can front of the, you know the. Cars, cons, all of this. Uh huh. But on the answer key, I don't understand why that's equation two. It goes from the equation two to equation two. So this one, would it be equation three? Or um. So you have to keep in mind that when we work backwards, what this is saying is you get from cons, you get from this to this via equation two. Okay. Oh. So if we're going backwards, we we can say we get from this to this via equation two. So that's what we're doing here. We're going from this to this via equation two. And similarly, we're going from here to here via equation three. Yeah. So that's what we do here. Yeah, okay. So when we write it backwards, it gets slightly offset. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm really sorry. I have to get going. I have a class that starts right now. But um, Nathan's here. You're going to take questions. Yeah, yeah, and I did all the problems here. And then Merrick. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. For sure. Yeah.